don't snag fish in streamer fishing, they can eat it or they can wear it. It's their choice. Their though. choice. And that rod gets behind them. Doesn't matter how hard they can. Like yeah, there you go. Wait, it's gonna be a yellow dungeon day. There's a big misconception about fly lines, sinking lines. They sink fast, too fast. They're, they're for dredging bottom and stuff like that. And we just simply don't do that. We really fish a lot, light, or a lot higher in the water column than most people think. Seldom do we fish deeper than two feet. Big fish don't ride on the bottom in really deep pools like everybody thinks they do. But we're running a 250 because the water's not as fast as it has been. I'm not going to be throwing giant flies today. Well, I don't think so unless Johnny makes me. Uh, I'm not going to be throwing really big flies. And the, the line's really, it's twofold. It's partly to keep the, the, it's partly to keep the fly in a certain depth. So it gets down just a little bit and it gets there very quickly. And it's also to carry the fly. So if I'm running flies this big or that big, I don't need a giant line, but if I'm gonna be throwing six, seven inch stuff, big water, then the line, the heavier the line, the easier it is to cast the fly. It's just about, it's ease for your casting more than anything. So I just swapped out and put a 250 on, which in the old days would have been considered quite heavy. Uh, since the invention of the 280s and the shovel heads and the 330s and stuff like that, and the, the more people fly fish with streamers, and the more popular it's gotten, the more they're kind of getting used to the fact that the lines aren't heavy like they used to say. They don't, they're not clunky. They're just, they're designed to turn flies over quickly and hold them there. I'm gonna work out of Johnny's flies because he owes me a lot of money. Your organization makes you catch more fish. If you can find what you're looking for in a hurry, more time on the water, the more you get. So it's that simple. You'll see that in a second. So we're gonna load up and head down we're on the Madison, it's high, dirty, uh, beautiful day. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be a great day to be out on the river, not necessarily a, what most people consider a great streamer day, but I think you'll see that that's not really gonna be a factor. It's, if, you're, if you adapt your system and your techniques to the day, it'll be just as good as if it was a dark, cloudy, rainy day. So, we're off. Johnny's on this river probably more than any, at least as much or more than any guide in the business. And so run us through what you said on the water clarity and all that. You know, it's a little dirty right now. We've got uh, on average about two and a half feet, three feet of visibility, which is perfect. Um, I, I prefer that actually. If you give me one, one water clarity to work with, I would say about three feet is where I want to be. Um, we're going to have a few cre creeks, uh, you know, putting in dirty and clear water along the way. So there is some mixing and the fish will eat in the mud uh, just as well as, as anything. So we're going to try a few different things, but we'll probably start with some bigger flies just to, you know, create a little bit more disturbance. It's bigger water. The, the trout's house is bigger. So we got to kind of, you know, knock on, a, on the door a little bit more. So just something that's going to push a little bit more water, the deer air heads and, and wool heads. Um, you know, definitely, definitely think a little bit better and also, uh, you know, create a little bit more disturbance when we're fishing. When he said, uh, he said lower profile, I grabbed one of these off my, I never have flies hanging in my bag like this, mm -hmm. by the way. This fly, even though it's longer than that one, when this fly gets wet, its profile is going to be like that skinny, right? 
So it's a long, it's still a bigger fly, but the profile gets really lean. Mm. And so that's later in the season. And there's, there's better examples than that because that's still kind of a broad fly, but mm. it's basically just skinnying things down. But today we're not playing that game. Well, to start. Well, we'll, t yeah. Yeah, we'll see, you know, there's no rules. Uh, I mean, there's just observations that we make given different uh, conditions. Never prolong your certainty on things. It's, it's always good to keep experimenting until you crack the code. And once you crack the code, then you can, you can ride with it for a little bit. But you're, uh, you're, just, you're just checking off the boxes until you figure out what's working. So when you're running down the river, move, change with a purpose, change it quickly. You know, I would say three minutes is a, in a float is a long time. Five would be probably more comfortable for most people. And then change that fly and start databasing that. And don't, don't just live off that one day you had a great day on olive or black or white or whatever it was, because that's not today. Uh, one thing that kind of determines how quick I change my fly is knowing or having some idea of fish populations on the river that you fish. If you're fishing the Missouri and you know that there's six or 7,000 fish per mile, and you go five minutes, but you go, holy sh, you passed a lot of fish and you didn't move anything. If you're fishing an area where there's bigger fish and less of them, you might be fishing an area that has five, 600 fish per mile. Then I'd probably give it 10 minutes, you know, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Um, but high, high fish populations like the Madison that we've got here, where you know you have, you know, around 3,000, 4,000 fish per mile, you know you're passing a bunch. Um, so that said, like if you're going to an area where there's, you know, one seventh, one eighth of that, I don't know why I said one seventh, seemed like a good idea. Uh, not very good with fractions, but uh, give it a little bit longer. It's Just a give new it a little fraction. bit longer. Yeah. It's new fractions, new math. Yeah. New math. And then one get... seventh. <laughs> Away we go. Away we go. I reach for the best sports drink I, money can buy Gatorade. Or why even bother? You get that? Like that is melon. Oh, she gone. I think that was a fish. <laughs> right. You're right. You're right. Dang it. That's two. Okay, well, activity breeds activity, as Russ Madden says. We've had three eats there in a row, so we're pretty confident that one knocked my fly around. Check your fly when. You're fishing yeah. too. That's another thing that people forget to do. They'll throw a, a balled up articulated fly for five minutes before they realize it. You get a little closer in here. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you know. I am getting old, so you, you would want to go there? You want to go with the old guy jokes? They're going to be right up on that bank, eh? I started out pretty fast, and I tend to always do this when I do, when I'm streamer fishing just because it's exciting. And I start, and you can see I'm pulling the rod here. I do not strip line. I always use the rod. But when I started, I was, I was going about this speed to start. And then it's, if you were watching, my cadence starts to change. And I went into a tree on that one. I went, in, <laughs> I went into a, from that to, I kind of started just slowing down and double hitting like this, and I started doing the fly, so it would jump and pause just a little bit. So I was changing something, and soon as, and you never really know if it's that or the fish turned on or whatever, but this is 95% of people's retrieve. They do this, and this is all they do, all day, every day. And it's great if it's working, you know, but in that little tiny window, suddenly we had three fish pop it in a row. And everything, oh, talking, everything. I'm hoping there's something on that. Now that was a mid fish. Everything came after I started going fast with a little pause and then fast. I'm hitting the fly twice. 
I don't know if that's what happened or if the fish turned on, but what I do know is that if you have multiple options on your retrieve, you will catch more fish. <clears throat> Colder water, as water temperatures either are rising or falling, either one, you'll find that one retrieve is really superior to the other on those transitions. You get in the summer and you're generally, you know, the water temperatures are pretty consistent. You can kind of get a little bit more stagnant in your retrieves, but you get those temperature changes, you better have two or three different styles, particularly slowing things down. Give that pie about 200 more yards. Okay. I just don't buy that. We didn't get one off that last one. Anybody can throw to the water, but can you hit that grass? <laughs> We're gonna go natural dungeon. Change off the boogeyman, it kinda went quiet there. Had three fish eat and nothing for about another 10 minutes. So we're gonna switch it up to kind of a natural color with a little bit of copper in there. Never caught a fish behind this rock, even nymphy. I don't know why. Let me get you to the bucket here. You mean the one I was about to miss? That no, one? No, you wouldn't miss that. Wait. It's gonna be a yellow dungeon day. I don't even know what the name of this knot is. So, I said I use a loop. I just wanna show you how I do this. It's a non-slip mono knot. I don't, there's, I never really knew what it was called. Johnny just told me. So leave yourself enough line here. See, I've got a single overhand knot, and then I'm just gonna feed through. And then you wanna come out, you wanna go in the side of the loop and come out the same side that monofilament is on. So it's on this side, I'm coming out towards my hand. Just give me that. And then cinch it down roughly where you want your loop and then just two turns over top, just like that. Wet it, cinch it down near your eye, and there's your loop. You can do that as tight, once you get used to it, as loose or as tight as you want, but I usually leave about, I don't know, quarter of an inch out there. <clears throat> and then you're going. Okay, here comes a 10 pounder right here. And right here right here. You realize how much that sounds like, like an, an osprey? Eagle. Or an eagle? Eagle. I was just looking to see if they came down to see us. Yep. Eagle. Yep, I do. Is that how you hunt them? Yep. Nothing tastes as good as an eagle. I don't know. Owl. Something about an eagle owl in particular. Ow, that didn't take too long. Whoa. At least that was second cast. Second cast. Not a big one, but a great fish for you. It's a great fish for Kelly. You want the net? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter though. That's the activity right there. Second cast on yellow right when we changed. We, we ran that run. Wow, is he full. We ran that run. That's why you fish barbless. A dozen times, more than that. Sitting there talking, we ran, 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 ran. Switched to yellow, second cast. Really the first cast because the first Cast I threw was awful. <clears throat> That's not uncommon. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> All I right. not have it be the tenth cast. I think it was the eagle. I think it is. Or the spotted owl. Must be of. eagle man. Johnny and I fished together for 20 years, it's, and we have a kind of the same tendencies. It's not uncommon for us. It, you don't tend to do it so much guiding because you, you can kind of freak people out, but it's not uncommon for us to change a fly in a, in a minute or less. When you, when you know a river, or even if you don't, and you look at water and it's super fishy looking, and you go through one, two, three of those and you don't move a fish, that's when you start thinking about changing out the shade of the fly or the style of the fly and going through it. But it's you can waste a lot of time, and one of the most common things people do, if not the most common, 
is that they ride yesterday. Yesterday is not today, and three hours from now is not going to be right now. They'll, you had a great day yesterday on Olive. You get out here, and you just can't take it off. You have to. You've got to keep that rotation going, and the color is what it is. The, the color will tell you first what they're going to do. They'll come up and show. They don't have to eat the fly. They just have to come up and do this and tell you, and generally that means that your speed is wrong. But we, when Johnny and I fish together, it's not uncommon to have, we call it the gut pile, in the cup holder, how fast we go through flies to see what they're on. The faster you get to it, once you're on a bite, you hold that, but the faster you can get to that bite, the longer you're gonna catch fish. This water is so pushy, you have to find something behind. There's nothing gonna ride out here in this big water. It's coming. But if you get behind any of these breaks where the, like nothing's gonna ride in front of this log, ever. It'd be a complete waste of your life to throw there. Other than the fact that you'll donate your flies, which makes me more money. But that, so this heavy water is obviously gonna push the fish to the edge. So, I'm gonna to look to be behind most of that stuff. <coughs> I would never, you would never find a fish in front of that log pile. But you might back there. Be a cool eat if it happened. The beauty of a yellow fly is you can track that thing every inch. If you had tan on in here, Wouldn't be. I think I just saw one roll right behind that fly. Might have been a shadow. Mike Lawson bend. That's where Mike got his big one. Oh, right there. Banged me. Yep. All right. A Come yellow on, bite, baby. It's gonna be a yellow day. I still am not gonna give up on the olive bug at some point, but it's gonna be yellow. I had a fever dream. And this yeah. kind of bank and this kind of water, <clears throat> you can't fish too close to that bank. And it really, that would be a little too close. <laughs> and it really doesn't behoove you to Knowing that the fish can't hang, or they can, but they're not going to, they're not going to hang out in this. So you shouldn't be retrieving, at least I don't. Well, I'd I mean, be hunting let's... these things the first 10 feet until it flattens out like this. Up there it was pushy. Now Johnny might yell at me for that. But I want more hits close to the shore and back on the shore because we're, we're moving really quick right now. Oh, oh I got, got to him. that one. Good fish. That's a rain butt. Ah! Remember kids, don't look down. Stare at the fish. Was that a rain butt? Yes, sir. There's another There's one. There's another one. All right. I'm up here. He's as big as that rainbow. Yeah, we got another fish, though. That one is a brown trout. Not a brown of considerable size, but a brown nonetheless. Gotcha. Thank you, Neil. There you are, sir. Thank you, Neil. Nice little feller. All right, Kelly, what are we doing on you? That was a. That was nothing, Johnny. We hooked up rowing across that thing. It's a little tiny bucket. The first one was a really nice rainbow, just popped off. We simply went to. Now we're over in the dirty side of the water again, right? Where most people aren't going to fish this dirty stuff. But we've got a little bit of influx from the, up, the creeks up there, a little bit of clean. 
But we just simply got into a perfect holding spot. Two fish, two casts. I mean, it was just, we, we are where the fish are and we have the right thing on. So we've, now yellow is kind of taken over. For now. So for now, but Tommy's <laughs> not giving up on green. No, I, I, I'll, I'm in it for yellow as long as it, uh, it's the only time I can get them to eat yellow on the upper Madison is this time of year. We've got about two, three weeks, so I'm all about it. It is fun because you can see them coming. <clears throat> Both those fish were completely committed. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it really would have mattered what I did right there, but I was just given, you saw when I was stripping, just small, not really the water's coming through there pretty fast and there, also there. we did switch to lemon lime gatorade um and i think that may have something to do with it as well so what was it before uh well i started with red raid and that wasn't red really raid, going on so it. i went to lemon and all of a sudden yellow started working so there is a lot of black magic going on in here we'll have to see if that continues i've seen it, I've seen it before not everybody buys into it is that a dead elk? Nope, that is not. Looks like one to me. Looks like a big old pile of gut. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yes, sir. I'd say it's sleeping. Funny place to take a nap, if you ask me. Well, you take it where you can. Like a horse. It's too bad. Either way, not moving. I've often thought of becoming a dead elk. Smell like one. We're drifting with the current and twitching the fly, hopefully so it's sideways. Um, hopefully so the fly is going semi sideways to the fish. It gives them a lot better target. Nothing, no fish swims backwards. That you do not swim backwards in a the current. They turn around to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's doesn't It's kind work. of a funny visual, I like it. Yeah, they don't. So that bucket right there is the softest one on this curve. And it's really short. This stuff here, when you look at that, and you can see how much push is going underneath those trees, absolute waste of time. There's nothing that would live in there. If you're going to get one, it's going to be in that super short, soft pocket right there. But they're not going to fight this big current. I'm going to move you in just a little bit. A little better water coming up. Johnny just said he's, he's going to move me in a little bit. And what that's going to do, because these buckets are so short, it gets me more cast per foot. Like If I'm way out there, I don't get to take those two shots at that bucket right there. This is doable water right here, but this one coming up is much better. So this little bucket right here, right there, is a little softer on that edge. And not everything's going to be in a bank either. So you got to keep watching out front. But in this river, it's pretty fast out here, no matter what. But you still have to look for those buckets that are mid-river. Today it's not a chance because it's dirty, but because Johnny knows it a little better than the average bear. See that right where my fly is right now? That's a really soft bucket, like absolute money. I can't believe something didn't roll out of that. There's a big boulder up there cutting that bank or cutting that mid current. There's several right here. When you've, got, when you've got boulders that are, you can barely see them, there's always a negative current behind that. Even though they're covered up, there's a current below that boulder that's breaking the water pressure. Fish can sit in pretty big water behind those things and they don't, they don't have to put out any effort. So you're always like, it's, it's, the water's too dirty to see those right now over here. But you're always paying attention. Did you see that? I did not. I, that fly hit right next to shore. Fish rolled really quick. Nope. And it, and it. I'm looking right. It, the flies, 
it's it's a it's the hardest part of fishing fast water like this. That flat the fish came up and it flashed at my fly, but I don't think it wants to. I didn't think it wants to. I didn't think it wants to. That's a good sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I don't Speaking think American they like goodly. to. I think they're half committed, but they don't oh, want to. Oh man, that was a commit. That was a that commitment. was a full commit. <laughs> that fish came that out of the big water. One. That was a big That's one. three fish in 50 feet. Yeah, but that one wanted it. That one, the first two flashed at it, didn't really want to come out into that big current because he got it right on the edge. That one went out of the water trying to... That was like first strip, too. Yeah, explosion. I love that. Hold on one second, I forgot about this spot, then we'll go back to it. <laughs> we were scared. I was going on top of that fucking rock, I didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for the next fucking boat. Huh. Hmm. My number one pet peeve there, Braden, is when people hum me. Go buy good water and go, hmm. Yeah, that probably didn't help. Right that didn't there. help. That might not have helped. That'll oh, Mr. Muskrat. That'll, that'll stir up some Daphnia clusters. Oh. Get on the blobs. Oh, nice, that's a good nice, one. nice, nice. That one ate it. Keep, see how he keeps his rod out in front of you? Ah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good one. Another one on yellow there. Man, did that hurt my elbow. One thing I've always noticed with people and that I harp on is that when they set and they turn their hips and that rod gets behind them, it doesn't matter how hard they like fucking. That? Yeah, there you go. Keeps the rod out in front of you. He thought he had himself a canary. I got it, I got it. Oh, you don't like me doing your job? I know how to net the fish. Gotcha. Thank you. I'll let you touch them though, I'm afraid to touch them. Another little guy. So that hook fell out. We've lost two or three. That last fish was a really good fish. We were talking about how people fight fish. Other one. About not getting the rod bent, keeping it bent. There's another one just pushed it. Right there, right. Oh. One just pushed Yeah, it. I saw him. <laughs> They're on this yellow bite pretty good right now. Oh, that's the best. White bite and yellow bite. Yo, it's pretty hard to beat. The old Chiquita banana. It's a Chiquita banana. Oh, oh man. Oh, <laughs> see, huh? They're on it. He's got a fly in his armpit. I know, but that was so great. It's in me. <laughs> Dude. That yes. was a good one, too. That was a good, that was a good one. <laughs> That was a good one. We're gonna have a good one down yeah. here in this cove too. You got time. On the Jaquita. Banana. Yeah. Yeah. Snake bit. Check your yeah, check your bug real quick, dude. It looked like it was something. Is it twisted on the back? Just oh, all good. Leg. Okay. Three dry fly eats in a row. Yeah, that's awesome. Just Eat it there. Come on. When you start having the Jaws theme play in your head, it's a good day. You're waiting for it. The thing you have to be careful with when you get on one of these bites that are just, they're slamming, 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 is that you don't change. People you, tend to you, speed it up. Oh, man. <laughs> you watch the people, second. they get all the adrenaline in there and they start speeding it oh, up. Oh, God. It's like Second. that's not what they were eating. <laughs> yeah, they just, everything gets about double speed. This, uh, this pool now is absolutely the opposite of everything we've been in. <clears throat> this one's all the way to the boat with the retrieve because it's all stable water all the way across. Not like up there where we had four or five foot of water to work with. Here we get the edge still, but we're coming all the way across. I'm getting a little bit of bow in my line and I'm working my fly with the rod. 
I'm going upstream because it's soft and I'm pushing against, the water's not really pushy. So I'm pulling my rod to the left to animate the fly and it keeps the line coming straight back at me with that just enough curve in it to make sure that the head of the fly is going downstream. But you want to, it's just a different style of water. We came out of that fast stuff. So then we started working the fly all the way back to the boat. We've had two or three that have chased it a long ways out. We didn't get either of them, but they, they came a long way. So they're committing to the fly. This is, we've got commitment. Got him. Got Still got him. Still got him. Got a little behind that one. That's either got foul the, hook. Yeah, I got him on the side. I was going to say, that's either Sometime. foul hook or a giant fish. Yeah. <laughs> you don't snag fish in streamer fishing. They can eat it or they can wear it. It's their choice. Their though. choice. But. What you don't want to have happen is get the hook in your hand while you're getting them out, like Kelly frequently does. Get out of here. And don't film and that. And you get pained. Yes. <laughs> you get the pain train. You see this rock? No. It's right here. Where? Uh, I don't know. 